I think on the other hand, it also sort of made sense to me in this weird way where I was like, all right, if anyone was gonna do it, like it had to be someone who was breaking all the rules. It's halfway through 2016, and the Queen Elizabeth Building is hosting the third annual installment of Canada's premier tournament series, Get On My Level. The top eight qualifier for this event featured Global Rank 5 and member of the illustrious Five Gods of Melee, Jason Mewtwo King Zimmerman, facing off against Nunn, a bright-eyed and flashy Captain Falcon player who had just broken into 2015's Top 100 at Rank 58. While many were excited to see Nunn make a breakout performance at this event, his upcoming matchup appeared to be the end of the line. Mewtwo King's record against Captain Falcon had remained nearly flawless for almost a decade, and at the time, the only people who seemed to pose a significant threat to any of the Five Gods were some of their own members. And this particular member of the Five Gods became known for nearly robotic execution and optimal decision-making, to the point where it earned him the same nickname of the Robot. But sometimes all it takes is a wild card to make a robot malfunction. And Nunn's career-defining tournament would ride on the back of this single roller coaster of a set, followed by the combo of the year. Yeah, I was just uh, fresh off of a car crash. I was going to the body shop, met an old friend, and he was like, yo, I haven't seen you in a while. We should play some Smash again, because it had been a while. And yeah, I agreed, and that's kind of how it started. Get On My Level was a national tournament series in Toronto, Ontario taking place in the Queen Elizabeth Building on May 20th to 22nd in 2016. The head organizer, Toronto Joe, was widely regarded as a community leader for the Canadian scene, and he helped transform Gommel into a melee mainstay, now consistently bringing in over 1,000 entrants and firmly establishing itself as the largest tournament series in Canada. It also won the award for the best Canadian eSport event at the first ever Canadian Game Awards on September 18th, 2020. Even early on, the event would bring in very respectable numbers. Beginning in 2014, the Get On My Level series kicked off with a modest 330 entrants and grew into great success, nearly tripling its numbers by its third installment in 2016. The third edition of the tournament roped in 987 unique entrants, which made Gommel 2016 the largest Canadian Smash tournament of its time until it was later passed by the same event in 2019. For Melee, 509 players would enter the singles bracket, including a star-studded group of competitors. Each of the active gods of Melee, Mango, Mewtwo King, Hungrybox, and Armada, alongside Leffen, the now God Slayer, were present, making Gommel 2016 one of the most highly anticipated events of the year. But with such great talent in attendance, no one really thought twice about the Nicaraguan Captain Falcon playing on his home turf, Edgar Nunn Shelby. What was Nunn like before that tournament? Me, I was still back home in uh, Nicaragua. I was uh, unknown to North America at the time. Originally from Nicaragua, Edgar Nunn Shelby was a relatively unknown player to the Melee community. He was the best player in Nicaragua, but he still didn't quite get on the map until moving to Toronto, Ontario. It was there that he would start turning some heads. With respective 9th and 3rd place finishes at the Canadian events The Come Up and Mixmaster 4, alongside a popular combo video titled Second to None, he had garnered a bit of a following. His fans would begin likening him to the wild and chaotic playstyle of Johnny S2J Kim, the highest ranked Captain Falcon main from 2014 to 2015. But one of the biggest gameplay criticisms from S2J in that era was in his particularly weak edge guarding. In his early career, S2J became notorious for decisions by the ledge which often resulted in dropped conversions, self-destructs, or even lost sets. None would be described by these fans as an S2J but with edge guarding, which at the time was a huge compliment. Like S2J, Nunn became popular for his high-risk, high-reward gameplay, flashy combos, and his ability to create chaos in even the most balanced of players through an unpredictable decision tree. I think you should give respect, but not too much respect, because when you start to give too much respect, it could uh, affect your performance. Overall, just knowing who they are, 
knowing what they've done, but they treat them just as any other opponent. Over a handful of events in 2015, none would conclude the year labeled as a rising star, but with a bit of inconsistency. Wins over Cobol, Professor Pro, and some of Canada's best, juxtaposed against 97th and 65th place finishes at EVO 2015 and the Big House 5, left none with a formidable rating as the number 58 player in MIOM's top 100. For some, it was only a matter of time until none truly broke through, and 2016's Get On My Level was looking like the perfect setting to turn the corner. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think that at that point it was just kind of a matter of time, and that just happened to be his breakout tournament. He actually just is this good, and he, we were just kind of waiting for his breakout performance to really put him on the global radar, if you will. Prior to Gommel, none would begin his 2016 with an impressive start. His first showing at the Genesis series left him with a 33rd place finish with an upset victory over 2015's rank 14 player Pew Pew Yu. In addition, a strong 17th place exit at Pound 2016, 4th at Fight Pit 6, and 9th at EGLX brought more and more attention to Canada's rising star. And going into the home region super major of Get On My Level, Nun's stock would continue to rise. But I don't think anyone could have predicted how this weekend was gonna go. Dude, that might be one of the coolest, like, points of melee history. Like, the, I was watching that tournament. Yeah, so nuts. That win came completely out of nowhere, I think, for onlookers, at least. Even early on in the tournament, Nun was met with a grind. Winner's finals of his pool brought him to the fellow Canadian Moki, a highly technical and fast-paced Fox who had squeaked out their first game in a best of three. Nunn was able to run two games back to make it out of his pool on the winner's side, but his first match in the main bracket would be against Ice, 2015's rank 17 and the best player in Germany. He would impressively bring this set to last stock in game three, but unfortunately was unable to go the distance, resulting in Nunn falling to the loser's bracket just before top 32 of bracket. His next opponent was Vanitas, another Canadian player who played a character Nunn was known to despise, Ice Climbers. In early Melee, many Ice Climbers players relied heavily on a technique called wobbling. While its uses in modern day play remain a bit controversial, wobbling is an infinite combo accessible only to the Ice Climbers in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and it requires having both Ice Climbers alive. If performed correctly, the opponent will be hit in an inescapable alternating rhythm which ultimately leads to a guaranteed KO. Just prior to Gommel, Nunn would take a 3-0 loss to 2015's Global Rank 84 Diz Kid Boogie at Fight Pit 6, with exposure to the wobbling technique that would solidify the Falcons' distaste for the matchup. And near the end of the year, Nunn would famously tweet, I'm getting wobbled in my favorite game, what do I do, in the middle of being wobbled by the very same Diz Kid. Though Vanitas might have been a notch below Nunn in skill, running into any ice climbers was scary. Nunn ended up narrowly taking this set two games to one, but still having been pushed to a tiebreaker game to advance into top 32. This trend would continue across his bracket. No matter the opponent, Nunn had to work for each win. And as Chuck Polinick says in his book Survivor, there are only patterns. Patterns on top of patterns. Patterns that affect other patterns. Patterns hidden by patterns. Patterns within patterns. If you watch close, history does nothing but repeat itself. What we call chaos is just patterns we haven't recognized. What we call random is just patterns we can't decipher. What we can't understand we call nonsense. What we can't read we call gibberish. Our real discoveries come from chaos, from going to the place that looks wrong and stupid and foolish. Yeah, my only goal was to put uh, Nicaragua on the map. That's all I wanted, and to create a little bit of chaos. Uh, you didn't really have to follow a strict guide or a strict way of playing the game. And uh, yeah, I brought a little bit of my flair into it, and I'm, I'm happy to, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to leave a mark here. I had to play a few matches beforehand. I had to play uh, Pew Pew, it was a tight game five. So this is interesting, Pew Pew opting to play Fox this time. Maybe he feels that his Marth actually isn't confident enough in this matchup against Nunn played hugs and tight game five. Nunn is actually really strong in this matchup. Like we've seen him beat Duck on numerous occasions. The way I thought it is if I just, you know, just improvise and just play it one step at a time, I won't get in my own head. If Nunn takes this out, he moves forward and loses his bracket, upsetting QBU yet again, reminiscent of Genesis. The jab reset, oh my god, no, oh no, oh no, this. Oh, Nunn. Oh, drops the edge oh, guard no. there. Nunn. No, PBU rather still has a chance at life. Oh, oh yes! Next guard. Great stuff from Nunn taking a back. Three to two. Nunn with another stop to work with still. 
Oh, that's it, is that, is that it? it? That's, that's it. it! That takes it! And the crowd goes absolutely wild for the Canadian hero. Canada is alive. Canada is definitely alive, still living in this tournament. Let's go nuts. By the time I met, I was gonna play M2K, I was drained out. I was ready to call it quits, go back home. And uh, yeah, the, the players from my scene, they kind of uh, talked me up. Uh, they were kind of like uh, telling me that you, you know, the usual, you got to do it for Canada, this and that, you, the usual pep talk. And I was like, fine, fine. You want to prove to people that you got what it takes, right? And, um, you know, slowly I, I started making that run and I didn't really pay too much mind to it. But eventually, you know, the Canadians come through, you got to keep going, you got to keep going, because eventually I was the last Canadian in it. And um, yeah, one thing leads to another, and then all of a sudden you're repping your country. After an inspiring run through losers, Nunn would be met with arguably the most challenging draw his bracket could have had, a top eight qualifier against Jason Mewtwo King Zimmerman. For the longest time, Mewtwo King seemed to be the apex predator in the Captain Falcon food chain. I don't know what it was, but something about Mewtwo King and his chic just completely countered anything Falcon could bring to the table. Add in the community perception of Sheik being Captain Falcon's most challenging matchup, and you're left with one hell of a top eight qualifier for none. And I should also add, Mewtwo King wasn't just good at the Falcon matchup, he was a freak. No Captain Falcon player had beaten M2K at a major event since the old school legend Isaiah in 2006. And for the record, Mewtwo King didn't even play Sheik in that set, he played Fox. To most everyone in the venue, this set was a foregone conclusion. None made a valiant effort through losers, but his run would surely end here at ninth place. Oh, shut up, D! Yo, yo, no yo, 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 yo! None takes game one from Mewtwo King. Insane. But then he won game one. Every habit that I thought that Mewtwo King had and I knew about. He was just exploiting it on a level that I'd never seen before. With Game 1 in the books, Mewtwo King would counterpick Nun to Fountain of Dreams, a historically challenging stage for Captain Falcon players. The first minute goes by without a ton of action, and Mewtwo King ultimately draws out the first stock of the set. Another 20 seconds goes by, and Nun, after playing a few mix-ups, baits out a spot dodge from M2K and converts that into a stock. As quickly as Nun is able to get one on the board, Mewtwo King answers right back with two. Nun brings the game down to a two-stock lead, but it's not enough and M2K evens the set count at one to one. A two-stock out of M2K Sheik was about what most everyone in the venue expected to see. Yeah, Nun was able to squeak out a win, but Mewtwo King would wrap this one up just as quickly as all of the other Captain Falcons he had beaten over the last 10 years, right? But then Nun won game three. Yeah, oh, oh my god! And he gets the lead! Yeah. What a read! Mewtwo no King way. is down 2-1 to one versus none in losers round of 12 oh here at Get On My god. Level. In a bizarre twist of fate, it was global rank 58 none at set point against one of the five gods of melee. Not the best falcon in the world, S2J. Not the next best falcon in rank 23, Wizrobe. It was the Canadian falcon making his debut on the top 100 list over 50 places down from the robot. I was like, wait, wait, what's going on here? I didn't even really know who Nun was. I think I did actually, but like, he wasn't like completely on the radar. And I'm just watching him completely get in Mewtwo King's head. The gods of Melee rarely, if ever, took losses from players outside of their own. Hell, not even players within the top 20 could consistently take sets off of them. Probably the most noteworthy of which being Armada, who ended up taking fifth at Gommel, the lowest ever placement in events where he didn't forfeit or sandbag in his career. Though Armada was an extreme example of sheer consistency across the gods, the other four, Mewtwo King included, had plenty of accolades to their own name. Surely, this sheer ability for the game and seemingly unstoppable presence among non-gods would be enough to turn the set back in his favor. But then none won game four, and the set was over. Oh! The 
The crowd erupts. No one expected that, but everyone felt like they were ready for it. Horns are blaring, the crowd is chanting for Canada, and none just walks off like it's any other day. It showed me that I had what it takes. I was thinking maybe that was an accident, you know? You start, th you start thinking, maybe that was an accident, maybe I can't do it again. I've had other, uh, you know, good showings, and um, I guess, yeah, I guess that was like the turning point and where I was like, you know what, I can actually, and I should actually take this a bit more seriously, and uh, hopefully I can make it far. Nunn, the world's 58th best player on 2015's SSBM rank, had just taken out rank 5 Mewtwo King. For the first time in Melee's history, a player ranked below 50 on the SSBM rank had upset one of the gods of the game. But that was just to get into top 8, and he got to move on to a loser set versus Joey Lucky Aldama for 7th place. Nun's run would unfortunately end here though, as this following set against Lucky would end in a last stock, last game defeat, but it wouldn't be without what some consider the highlight combo of 2016. Not once to brag, but I, I do think that's one of my better combos in my career. <laughs> what about the, uh, that combo against Lucky? So nasty. <laughs> Is that when Odd Shot was a thing? I think it was. It was. Yeah, yeah I remember it. It's like someone's got an Odd Shot. <laughs> <laughs> When I watched Nunn as a player, like, Nunn was somebody that I was a big believer in for a really long time because I used to go to, so I didn't make it to that gommel, but I'd been to a lot of the other Get On My Level tournaments, like, before they were considered majors. So Nunn was someone who was already on my radar. Uh, I thought he was, like, really, really insane, really, like, you know, I was like, this guy is someone who can absolutely, like, just become, like, the next, like, godlike falcon. Yeah, that was a momentum shift. After that, the set just changed. Yeah. Sorry again, Lucky. At the end of the day, it does feel like, for some reason, Nun happens to be the, he's like the record-breaking Falcon. I, I always thought that was kind of cool. Before Gommel 2016, January 13th, 2013, was the last time a Captain Falcon player had placed within top eight at a melee major. Almost three years later, Nun became the record breaker, the Kingslayer, the wild card. And he did it in a big way, on a path in melee that was all his own. The first Captain Falcon player to defeat Mewtwo King Sheik in a best of five set in over a decade wasn't just an accomplishment, it was a moment in history. Those are like defining moments, I think. Those are defining moments in your career that, I think personally, I don't think too much of them like actively, but when I go back and I remember things, I remember at this point in time, my life changed in Smash because that's the point in time where people started to know who I was. And like, for example, the Music King is cool. The Music King match is cool and all, but I think it was more the process of getting there, like you were saying, than the uh, outcome at the end that matters. Nun's exit from Gommel at seventh place was more than impressive, but the thought that fifth or even better was just a single stock away was surely a dream that lingered in the minds of many. I mean, it sucks, of course, right? You always want to do the best you can and make it as far as you can, but um, I've, been, uh, I've been very good with dealing with disappointment over the years. It's kind of like a skill you have to learn when competing, and you use it to fuel yourself. You don't use it to bring you da down and um, yeah, I just, I watched it a few times, you know, obviously a bit mad, a bit sad, but um, it helped me for the future for sure. Those are like I said before, those are like the stepping stones that you use to keep going in your in your career, so. I don't think the outcome mattered. I think what hap what mattered was the set and the Music King match. Like the overall whole run, it was like a whole package, you know, it wasn't just that one set, but um, I mean, who knows? Maybe I could have gone further in the run and uh, it would have been, Something. I've never really thought about it, to be honest, but you, know, you, you never know. Although he ended up losing this set at the start of Top 8, Nunn's showing at Gommel 2016 remains a pivotal moment in his career. Nunn proved to everyone that it didn't matter what your rank was, it didn't matter if no one had done it before, and it didn't matter if no one was ever going to do it again. Falcon can be cheek, gods can bleed, and robots, gods, kings, whatever. None of that matters anymore because anyone willing to take risks has what it takes to dethrone a king.
for your life. My name is Edgar Shelby. I go by Nun. I'm playing for Golden Guardians right now. And um, yeah, that's the most interesting thing about me right now. I don't got too much going for me, but I guess we'll play it by ear. Run for your life. To see the full uncut interviews with Nun, Zane, and Toph, consider supporting Turn Down for Walt on Patreon. Was the forward smash intentional? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Was not ready for that, but I should have been.